Today's gonna be one of those informal videos I promised I'd make in a bid to make more videos. That's going well, isn't it? So I love words, etymologies, and names. Etymology is the study of the history of words, usually from their Latin or Greek origins. So for example, the word hermaphrodite comes from the Greek gods Hermes and Aphrodite, whose son Hermaphroditus fused with a water nymph called Salmachus and formed a creature of both sexes. Who says Greek mythologies are boring? Seeing as in biology, we try to give each species at least one name, and there are nearly two million known species to science, it's hardly surprising that there are some amazing stories about names hidden in their midst. So I present Sally's top six, or twelve, depending on how you count them, facts about animal and, to a lesser extent, plant names in no particular order. Number one, apes versus monkeys. So I have a confession to make. I am one of those infuriating people that corrects you if you say less instead of fewer. And worse than that, far worse than that, is if you say monkey instead of ape. All the things you think of as monkeys, apes, lemurs and a few other weird ones are all primates. So if you're not sure what to call it, call it a primate. Within the primates, excluding the lemurs, tarsiers and lorises, you have the monkeys and the apes. If it's got a tail, it's a monkey. As a general rule, if it doesn't have a tail, it's an ape. An even easier way to know if you've got an ape is just to learn them. There are so few species of ape. There are 16 species of gibbon, which are collectively known as the lesser apes, and then there are seven other species, collectively known as the great apes. These are the iconic ones, the ones that will send me seething if you call them a monkey. They are the orangutan, Bornean and Sumatran, the gorilla, western and eastern, the chimpanzee, the bonobo, and of course, not forgetting our very selves, the humans. So this is not a monkey. Rant over, moving on. Number two, British birds. Three very common British birds are the daw, the pie and the red breast. Although you probably won't know which ones I'm talking about, as in the 1500s, these were all given common personal human names to remember them. The door was called Jack, the pie was called Mag, and you guessed it, the red breast was called Robin. There was also the Wren, who was called Jenny, but you only very rarely hear the term Jenny Wren, whereas the others, the name fused into one, and now we have the Jack Door and the Magpie and Britain's most loved bird, the Redbreast, became known only by its personal name, the Robin. Number three, stupidly long names. Whilst it's all very well having personal names that people can remember, sometimes it gets a bit out of hand. The plant that we now know as Plantago media was once known as the plantain with pubescent ovate lanceolate leaves, a cylindric spike and a terete scape, or worse, in Latin, Plantago folius avato lanceolatus pubentesibus, speaker cylindrica scapo terity. At that point, Linnaeus got involved and created the binomial nomenclature that we use today with a Latin genus and species name. And speaking of Linnaeus, number four, Carl Linnaeus and his many names. So for someone who revolutionized taxonomy by simplifying the naming process, he had an awful lot of names. His original Swedish name was Carl Nielsen Linnaeus, although since he was writing mostly in Latin, he had to translate this to Carolus Linnaeus. Then in 1761, he became a noble, and his Swedish name became Carl von Linné, and that translated in Latin to Carolus a Linné. Four names. Ridiculous. Number five, frogs versus toads. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go off into another monkeys versus apes rant because this time it's the fault of the name and not the user. Britain is arguably the home of natural history and to this day we still have some of the best natural records of any country in the world. And in Britain, there are only really two common species of amphibian. There's Rana temporaria, the common frog, and there's Bufo Bufo, the common toad. So guess what, if one of our British naturalists found an amphibian that looked like the common frog, i.e. wet, smooth skin, reasonably aquatic, they called it a frog. If they found anything that looked like our common toad, i.e. dry, warty skin and not quite so aquatic, they called it a toad. But of course the appearance of your skin bears no relation to your evolutionary history. I'm sure there's a lesson to be learned in there. And as a result there is no meaningful difference between frog and toad, except it gives you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like. Number six, geeky humour. Linnaeus himself named the blue whale Bylanoptera musculus, where musculus means both muscular and, get this, 
little mouse. Oh, Linnaeus, you crack me up with your ironic double meanings. Seriously though, discovering a species is actually quite a tedious process. First you've got to find the thing, well, that bit's quite interesting. But then you've got to check it against all the other species to make sure it's not just a weird version of a species that's already been found. And then you've got to convince the official bodies that it is a new species. And so some of these names certainly sound like they were made up in the pub after a very long day of classification. We have Aha Ha, an Australian wasp who reportedly caused its discoverer, Arnold Menk, to exclaim Aha when he saw it. The Beyonce horsefly, a bootylicious fly with a golden lower abdomen. The Brazilian water beetle, E2 Brutus. A wasp from Central and South America called, he is looking at ya. A fungus beetle called, jelly bean. The Gamboa worm salamander, formerly known as Oedipus complex. And my absolute geeky favourite is a parrot that went extinct seven to thirteen hundred years ago in the South Pacific. It's called the Conquered Lorikeet, and its Latin name is, get ready for it, Vini Vidi Vici. I just can't eat off. Oh, who says scientists don't have a sense of humour? I hope you like them, and if you have come across any cool animal names that I've missed off, leave them in the comments. I love reading about names and that kind of stuff. And yeah, subscribe and like and all that jazz. And I will be seeing you soon, actually, because I know that there's a video that is going to be coming out in probably the next fortnight. So I hope you like that and keep smiling. Look, I'm not actually in the shed. It's a green screen.